our superintendent, Mr. Christopher Mays, our esteemed faculty, staff, parents, students, and to our honored students, the 2021 graduating seniors. It is my good pleasure to greet each of you to the Wonderland Incorporated BMI School graduation ceremony. Graduation is a time that the school, parents, and students celebrate together students' accomplishments in education. And I am so grateful and excited for each graduating senior having achieved this awesome milestone in their lives, achieving against the odds. As you know, for this year, we have had to adjust to many challenges facing the COVID-19. By the grace of God, we made it. We are elated for our children persevering through this challenge and now being promoted kindergartners through eighth grade. Parents, we thank you for giving BMI the opportunity to partner with you in preparing your children with a strong educational foundation as they move on to graduate from high school. As we know that you are excited about all of your efforts, hard work, self-denial, were not in vain. And you must be proud to see your child accomplish this goal. And BMI is celebrating with you on their investments as they poured into the students, academic skills, character building, guidance, hard work, and serving others so that they may be productive citizens. Today, we are the village celebrating BMI eighth grade students on their victory, completing nine years of school. And they are well prepared for high school. To our graduates, we are so proud of you. And we all are looking forward for the year 2025 when you graduate from high school. Don't stop there. Continue to receive your college education. To do that, you must stay focused on your goal. Don't give up and get accustomed to hard work. We thank you, our superintendent, teachers, program committee, and for this promotional graduating program. Your caring spirit is appreciated. Job well done to the class 2021. Congratulations. Good evening, Ms. Beatrice Mays, the esteemed founder of BMI Charter School, Mr. Christopher Mays, our superintendent, faculty and staff, distinguished guests, parents and friends, and kindergarten and eighth grade graduates. Welcome to our second annual virtual graduation ceremony. As a student, this year has certainly been unforgettable in some unusual ways. So many things that were commonplace before are different, such as having all of my peers inside of a classroom together, being free to sit next to a classmate without social distancing, and being able to take a cool sip of water from the school's water fountain. I could have never imagined actually missing classmate sidebars, teachers redirecting, and of course, the outbursts of laughter at just about anything. This year has definitely been memorable, yet and still, some things never change. Whether virtual or face-to-face -face instruction, our teachers continue to educate us fervently, communicate with parents constantly, and ensure students are prepared for the next grade level. Yes, the tactics were manipulated, but the goals stayed the same. Provide excellence in education. Thank you, Mr. Mays, administrators, administrative support staff, and especially the cafeteria crew for delivering breakfast and lunch daily. Thank you all for ensuring that BMI Charter School remains sustained, committed, even in a pandemic. Our standard of excellence continues. Again, welcome to our second annual virtual awards and promotion ceremony. Thank you.
Good evening, Ms. Mays, Superintendent Mr. Christopher Mays, Chief Academic Officer Ms. D. Johnson, esteemed faculty and staff, honored guests, family, friends, and of course, the 2020 through 2021 eighth grade graduating class of Beatrice Mays Institute Charter School. We are finally here. This is a significant milestone in our lives and we are now ready to advance to high school. I first just wanna say congratulations. We passed the eighth grade during a pandemic and we've been a part of history all while accomplishing this achievement. Not a lot of people can say that. We cannot forget those who have helped us to get to this point in our lives. I would like to thank my diligent teachers for encouraging me and insisting that I strive to do my very best. Ms. Collins, Ms. Bill, Coach Bean, Ms. Thompson, Ms. Broussard, Mr. Casado, Mr. Watts, Ms. Stoller, and Mr. K. Thank you, and thank you for the memories. I'll never forget how every time I logged into math class this year, Mr. Watts would joke and tell me that I've been wearing the same jacket every day and that I needed to wash it. He didn't realize how these jokes would put a huge smile on my face and it really added some laughter to my unusual school day. I'll also remember how Mr. Casado would spill no detail in lecturing about the Civil War. Your vivid descriptions of this battle enabled me to envision how this warfare could have looked. After that particular lesson, I ran straight to my room, dumped out all my Legos, and made my own model of the Civil War that you described in class. You have all made a huge impact in my education, and because of all the educators here at BMI, I am who I am today. Thank you. At this time, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for my friends and family and encouraging me, supporting me through these difficult times. To my mom, Dr. Norman, thank you for being there late nights and early mornings helping me with my homework. To my dad, Mr. Norman, thank you for keeping me fit and strong. My sister, Camille, thank you for staying out of my room. And to my little brother, Cayman, thank you for not breaking my things. I would also like to thank my grandmother for just being you. And to all my other family members, I appreciate your unwavering support love and your encouragement that you have shown me throughout the years. To my friends, thank you for just being my friend. A special thanks to Aiden, who pleaded with me to have his name mentioned in my speech. Thank you all. Because my mother is now vice president at Concordia University in Austin, Texas, we will be moving this summer. We haven't decided which high school I will be attending yet, but I will continue to strive and do my best to make you proud. Before I say goodbye to BMI, I would like to share three drops of knowledge with you and my peers. So everyone, Please hold out your hands and get ready to catch these facts. I think that I'll throw these at you with the method I learned from Ms. Broussard. First, I'll drop the knowledge, and then I'll back it up with supporting details. Thanks, Ms. Broussard. Ready? Let's go. The first drop of knowledge that I want to leave with you this evening is to stay positive. Positivity is probably the one thing that kept me going through this entire pandemic. If you make a poor grade on a test, don't cry, get upset, or try to hide it. Instead, study more, keep your head held high, and stay positive about it. Having a positive outlook in life will help you keep going and never give up on your goals. My second drop of knowledge is to keep an open mind. I remember when there was a new student in our class. He always came late, never finished his assignments, and he slept in class. Now some people just assumed he was lazy because it was from their perspective. But I began to speak to this individual, getting to know him, and I discovered that he was having a difficult time at home. Because I kept an open mind, I was able to help him with his predicament, and afterwards we became friends that will to this day stay connected. Which brings me to my final drop of knowledge. And you might wanna get your pens and papers out for this, ladies and gentlemen, because this is probably the most important drop of all. Stay connected. I've learned that there's nothing more important than staying connected in any crisis, pandemic, whatever challenges that may come throughout your lives. And no, I don't mean texting each other, hey, each month. I mean actually conversing, calling each other and retaining friendships. You should have a friend that you can just feel comfortable talking to, so you don't have to talk to your pillow each day. Being my family, if there's anything that I want you to take, take from this speech, it will be these three things. Stay positive, keep an open mind, and stay connected. Class of 2020 through 2021, I once again say congratulations, and to future students who are lucky enough to walk the halls of BMI, I say good luck. I know you'll love it. Farewell from your salutatorian, your friend, and your favorite classmate, don't look at me like that, you know I am, Cedric Norman Jr. Thank you. Good evening, Mrs. Beatrice Mays, BMI's founder, Mr. Christopher Mays, our school superintendent, Chief Academic Officer, Ms. D. Johnson, esteemed faculty and staff, honored guests, family, friends, and the eighth grade graduating class of 2020-2021. Today is a day that many of us have been waiting patiently for, our graduation. It is the end of our middle school journey, 
We are on our way to meeting new challenges that are awaiting us. I know the school year was unusual and difficult during the coronavirus with online learning, social distancing, and wearing masks, but we were able to triumph over these unforgettable experiences. Finally, we reached the end of one unique school year. I am entirely grateful and extremely honored to have earned and received the title of 8th grade valedictorian of the 2020-2021 school year. I am also excited to graduate with my fellow classmates. When I first attended BMI in second grade, I didn't know what to expect. I was extremely reticent and wanted to be left alone. Everyone else in my class was either a new or returning student, but before long, I became acquainted and felt right at home with them. Mrs. A. Mays was my second grade teacher. She taught me almost everything I know about grammar and writing before I transitioned into middle school. Thank you, Mrs. A. Mays, for welcoming me and ensuring that I felt comfortable in a new environment. I shall always value and treasure my middle school teachers. I would like to express my gratitude to both Mrs. Broussard Parker and Ms. Thompson for assisting me in enhancing my reading, writing, spelling, and vocabulary skills. Because of Ms. Bill, I am much more scientifically aware thanks to her teaching. And learning a different language is a challenging task, but I show my appreciation to Mrs. Stollard for instructing me in an uncomplicated fashion. I never liked math, but thank you, Mr. Watts and Mr. K, for somewhat making it easier. Coach Bean, I know it'll be sad to see me go, but I can't be your fastest and best runner anymore. Now I'll apply this ability to good use to another school. Last but not least, Mr. Caicedo, thank you for teaching my favorite subject. Honestly, I wouldn't have known anything about government and civilization if it weren't for you. I want you to know that I am thankful that I had the opportunity to spend these last two years in your class. I wish that I could speak about all of my middle school educators, but time doesn't allow me but I promise you all that I would take the knowledge that I have gained and use it wisely. To my classmates that I've been so strongly connected to for the six years I've been at BMI, I knew from the very beginning that I would have stiff competition, and believe it or not, some of you had me really concerned. I almost thought I wouldn't be valedictorian. So I thank my worthy competitors, Aiden Randall, Jeremy Johnson, Cache Washington, and our very own salutatorian, Cedric Norman, for compelling me to work that much harder to remain on top. I am happy to have had an opportunity to have the four of you as my peers. I am ecstatic and grateful to have found my best friend, Michaela Kirksey, while we were in classmates at BMI school. Thank you, Michaela, for being with me for so long, and I hope wherever you go, you will succeed. To the rest of my fellow classmates, good luck in your future endeavors, and always be persistent. My magnificent family, I can never forget you. My father and stepmother, Mr. and Mrs. Blewett, have always been by my side, and without your guidance and unwavering support, I wouldn't have been able to achieve this prestigious title of valedictorian if it wasn't for the two of you. To my mother, even though she may not be here with us, I promise to make her proud in every way I can. I would especially like to thank my loving sisters, Kimberly, Cameron, and of course, Lily. Since I'm the youngest in our family, I have a lot of shoots to fill but all of your achievements have always motivated me to do my best. You have no idea how much I appreciate you three. Most importantly, I would like to say thank you to my God. He has been with me through every obstacle, trial, success, achievement, and so much more. And there's absolutely nothing I could have done without him. I wouldn't be standing here without my Lord. In the coming school year, I plan to attend high school for law and justice and pursue a path of becoming an attorney, just like my mother. I never thought I'd want to be a lawyer because I was so focused on becoming a track star. But things change. In high school, I aspire to make new friends, meet instructors who will continue to keep me challenged, continue to make straight A's, and definitely graduate from high school as valedictorian once again. I would like to leave this quote with my fellow classmates, and I hope you remember it. Education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. Malcolm X. Be sure to strive for greatness all the time. Don't let the world stop you from being who you want to be. You are your own person and don't let anyone change that. Also, listen to your parents. They didn't have Google to pass their classes. Thank all of my BMI family and I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to spend part of my educational journey with you. I will never forget you. But don't worry, I promise I'll be back to visit. Now at this time, I would like to introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Franz Brown. Franz Brown stands as an inspiration to all who long to realize their God-given potential. His is a story of an ugly duckling. As an at-risk youth growing up in Houston's third ward, he was told by many that life for him promised little more than prison and an early grave. But God had other plans. 
His dynamic teaching ministry as experienced in person and on television, Kept Houston Up With The Sun, gives life-changing insights into the power of God's Word and transcends culture, race, and denomination. Francis worked in the political arena, served as a congressional assistant in our nation's capital, taught at Dallas Theological Seminary, and served as a leadership consultant for churches and national community organizations. As evangelism minister at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, with senior pastor Dr. Tony Evans, Francis developed and led the Urban School Alternatives, a national evangelism and discipleship ministry that offers outreach interaction to public school systems. To date, this ministry has touched the lives of more than 15,000 students, parents, faculty, and staff. Francis is a graduate of Blinn College and Texas A&M University with degrees in business and speech communication. He visited as a cultural exchange student at George August University in Göttingen, Germany. He earned a Master of Theology and Church Educational Leadership from Dallas Theological Seminary, where he was recognized as one of the nation's most noteworthy students of higher learning. He has received numerous honors and awards for his professional achievement, exceptional leadership, and exemplary service to the community. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you Mr. Franz Brown. Congratulations, class of 2021. Several years ago, ESPN aired a documentary called The 50 Greatest Athletes of All Time. Included on this list were people like Jesse Owens and Wilma Rudolph, Wayne Gretzky, Babe Ruth, and Muhammad Ali, my personal favorite. He didn't get the selection, but uh, Michael Jordan was chosen as the greatest athlete of all time. There was another athlete on this list uh, of greatest. It wasn't a man, it wasn't a woman. It was a horse. And the horse's name was Secretariat. Secretariat was the greatest race horse ever. Every race that he ran, he won it, most of them anyway, in record timing. So much so that he was uh, awarded champion coat for two years straight and champion race horse for two years straight. When Secretariat died, they did this thing called an autopsy. And they found out something interesting. All of the times that Secretariat had won races, they, uh, people were mystified about how he was winning. Was it his size? Was it his training? Why was he so good? When they did this autopsy, they discovered that his heart weighed 18 pounds. <laughs> now that's noteworthy, that's significant because the normal size of a racehorse's heart is nine pounds. So his heart was twice the size of a regular or normal thoroughbred's heart. Thus, we have the secret to his success. It wasn't the oats he ate, it wasn't the training he had, it wasn't the jockey, it wasn't the food, it wasn't anything external, it was internal. It was his heart. Well, just the secretary, it's heart, it was the key difference that made the difference in his life in terms of which allowed him to be successful. The same is gonna be for you. Your heart is gonna make the difference. I know you might think, oh, well, no, my talent might make the difference. But you and I both know there are people who are talented who fail. You may even say my giftedness may make the difference. But there have been plenty of people who've been gifted but got distracted. Maybe you're thinking, but I'm smart. I'm intelligent, I'm brilliant. That'll make the difference. Sometimes smart, brilliant people get distracted and they crack under pressure. Now, the big difference in your life from this day forward will be your heart, the strength, the size, and the power of your heart. There are three characteristics to a strong heart. First, there's what we call uh, desire. And that is the passion to want to be something or somebody in this life. The desire to contribute, the desire to do more than simply make money, but the desire to make a difference. And then there is um, this trait called uh, discipline. Discipline simply means self-control, the, the focus to see through what you want to do and what you think your calling might be. Each and every one of you 
have some kind of calling on your life, somewhere that you're supposed to contribute. And even at your very young age right now, you're not exempt from contributing. There was a young man south side of Chicago, eight years old. His name is Jaquiel Jackson. Jaquiel was helping his aunt pass out um, needs to homeless people. And he was so moved by his involvement that he decided to come up with his own project uh, called the I Am Project or Project I Am. From that point on, he started passing out these blessing bags to homeless people that included toiletries and uh, toothpaste and things along uh, those lines. By the age 13, Jaleel, Jaquiel rather, had helped more than 35,000 people worldwide. Eight years old, 13, making a difference. Then there's this young lady by the name of Marley Diaz. Marley's an incredible uh, young lady. She got tired of reading books and not seeing people that look like her as a black female, as a black girl. And so at 11 years old, she decided that she was going to collect and donate books to libraries and places that featured black girls. She only wanted 1,000. She came up with a campaign, hashtag uh, 1,000 black girl books. By the time she was 13, she had secured 11,000 books. And she even wrote her own book called Marley Diaz Gets It Done, and so can you. So in order for you to, to make a difference, you're gonna have to have dedication. Dedication. That is the perseverance, the persistence to press through no matter what. That's when you say, I don't care what happens, I don't care what sidesteps, I don't care what missteps, I don't care what happens to me, what false steps, I am going to make it, I am going to be somebody and do something. Because the successful life, not just the life where you make money or as you young guns say, make paper, the successful life is to make a difference. A difference in your life, a difference in your communities, a difference in the world. There's a young lady you've probably heard of. Her name is Malala Yousafzai. She's a teenager in Pakistan. A group called the Taliban took over her uh, village. And when they did that, they said that girls were forbidden to go to school, forbidden to learn. She protested about this and wrote about it. In response to that, she was actually shot in the head. They tried to assassinate her. She survived this horrific attack um, and then decided to start a campaign of her own called the Malala Fund. And at age 17, she was awarded the prestigious Nobel Peace Prize. The youngest person who had ever received that. As a teenager, just because you're young, don't mean you can't make a difference, and that you shouldn't make a difference. So my friend, uh, Secretary, 18 pound heart, his heart was bigger than everybody else's heart. That's why he won. And that'll be the difference for you. It won't be your talent. Talent will get you there, will get you to the, to the game, to the front door. Gifts will get you to the front door. Potential will get you to the front door. Smarts will get you to the front door. The thing that will enable you to kick in the door and to stay the course will be the strength of your heart. Us adults <laughs> have not done the best job of leaving you with the world I think that you deserve. This world is far too complicated, negative, cynical, and sometimes far too dangerous. The plight of the world is not your fault, but it is your challenge to change. It is your opportunity to transform. But you won't be able to transform without being your best self. The world that needs you needs you as your best self. Your best self is to be like Secretariat big, strong heart. Jaquiel had a strong heart, or has a strong heart. Marcy, Malala, and they've all contributed in special ways to make this world a better place, and they continue to do it. The question I have for you on this day is this. What will you do? What will be your contribution to changing the world? How will you make your stamp and step in this world so that it becomes a better place to live for all of us.
your teachers at BMI, leaders at BMI, your family, the world, for that matter, awaits on the toes of anxious expectation to see you do your thing. My prayer is that you would do it. So congratulations, class of 2021. God bless. And we look forward to seeing exactly what you're going to do for us. On behalf of the faculty and staff, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to the parents who have become teachers. And thank you parents for being patient through the delay in our delivery of devices. And thank you teachers for making the transition to robust digital learning a success. Thanks to the administrative team for hours of planning and communicating and replanning. Thanks to every family who believes in my parents' dream of skill-based education. Thanks to my mom for having a dream of a school for our children and then believing in me to grow her dream beyond what she could even imagine. Finally, thank you to the graduating students for all your determination, tenacity, unyielding efforts towards their education. Thank you all. Each part was important in delivering excellence in education. Lastly, it is a considerable rewarding experience to work in the field of education, to touch the lives of youth and to do so for 20 plus years. That's phenomenal. So from our founder Beatrice Mays, the faculty and staff of Beatrice Mays Institute and Wonderland Private School, and from the leadership team, I want to say thank you to Ms. Jones and to Mr. Casado for the tireless dedication to education and to this historic institution for your years of service. I pray God's blessings on each of you in your retirement. Again, I say and we say thank you.
By the powers vested in me by the state of Texas and the Wonderland Board of Directors, I do hereby promote these scholars to the next grade. Congratulations. By the powers vested in me by the state of Texas and the Wonderland Board of Directors, I do hereby promote these scholars to the next grade. Congratulations.
by the powers vested in me by the state of Texas and the Wonderland Board of Directors, I do hereby promote these scholars to the next grade. Congratulations.